Our house for today is a Sheets Goldstein residence in Beverly Hills. World's famous for its use in many movies like The Big Lebowski and Charlie's Angels, video clips by Snoop Dogg and Doja Cat, and of course, many fashion photo shoots. The house is a masterpiece in both organic and space age architecture. Together with the Eldroth House, the Camelsphere, and the Arango Residence, it belongs to the top four most famous buildings designed by John Laudner. The house was built in 1963 as a home for Paul Sheets and his family. In the first years of its lifespan, the house looked very different than it is today. The house was easily visible from below the hill and the interior looked more straightforward. Millionaire James Goldstein bought the house in 1972 and together with John Lautner he redesigned the house. The iron window frames were replaced with frameless glass and the interior was decorated with futuristic furnitures. The house became hidden in a garden with tropical plants. This garden made the house look like a secret cave deep in the jungle. During the entire redecoration process, John Lawner had complete artistic freedom, which made this house the most complete of all his designs. Not only the furniture, but even the smallest details, everything is designed by the architect. Walking in this house is like walking in John Lawner's imagination. The layout of the house consists of basically two triangles with the points attached to each other. You can see here that one triangle is placed lower on the hill than the other one. The lower part of the house holds the master bedroom and the swimming pool. The terrace is placed on top of the lower triangle. The living room is placed where the points of the triangles come together. The roof exists of two triangles placed diagonally and touching each other at the horizontal base. The shape of the triangle returns in every detail of the house. From the early 90s, James Goldstein started with building a nightclub next to his own house. This nightclub has a tennis court on top of it and it includes also an office and a cinema. John Lawner was commissioned to design this building as well, but unfortunately he passed away before the design could be finished. The nightclub echoes the design of the original house, but it's even larger than the house itself. In recent years, James Goldstein donated the entire property to the Los Angeles County Museum of Art. After he will pass away, the house will become an artwork of their collection. This makes the house the first John Lawner design that will be open for the public. Until then, we have to watch this video to take a look inside. The house is located on a hillside. On the top of the hill is a dead end street and at the far end of this street is the entrance to the driveway. This driveway is descending and it goes through an entry gate. Finally, the street leads to the house. Upon arrival, you see only a small part of the house. This floor plan gives a complete overview of the layout of the house. Left from the carport is the entrance. An abstract statue based on a figure of John Lautner welcomes you at the entrance. A pathway leads to a pond with tropical fishes and artificial waterfall. Over the stepping stones you can walk towards the living room.
vision elevates from a concrete table. Pond and the plants continue behind the couch and go underneath the roof towards the other side of the living room. The water of the pond streams under the window in the middle. To bring light under the roof, hundreds of tiny holes are drilled in the concrete. The glasses that cover these the holes work as magnifying glasses and bring strong light beams to the ceiling. The entire facade of the living room is made of frameless glass windows. This creates an enormous transparency, which gives you the feeling of sitting in a cave while looking towards the landscape. The glass door is frameless and almost invisible. The couch continues at the other side of the glass and blurs the verge between inside and outside. At the end of the terrace, the floor level slightly elevates. This prevents people from accidentally walking off. This is a good alternative for a safety fence that would spoil the beautiful view over downtown Los Angeles. At the outside, the roof makes the house look like a large tent. All the furnitures are designed by John Lautner. They are custom made out of concrete and therefore not removable. The triangular cassettes in the ceiling are not just there for decoration. They prevent the sound from echoing. And without the cassettes, the living room would sound very hollow. The unpredictable layout of the house, with its many walls and corners, makes it exciting to walk through. Even the carpet on the floor is designed by John Lautner. The glass ceiling of the dining room can be electrically opened towards the air. Even the toilet is designed completely in style with the house. The toilet has an atrium with a skylight behind the sink. And, how surprising, a triangular toilet seat. The many spaces give the house an intimate feeling, despite being quite large. This room is used for watching movies. A cinema screen can be lowered down from the ceiling in front of the painting. Two guest bedrooms are only accessible from the balcony outside. Both guest bedrooms have large mirrors in the back that give the illusion that the guest bedrooms are larger than they actually are. When we go back to the dining area, we see a stair that goes outside and leads to the master bedroom. With its sharp edges, concrete steps and glass points, the house is not very safe. But beauty and transparency was chosen over safety. Here it is, the master bedroom.
glass. Outside the bathroom is a wooden terrace. In this terrace is an outside jacuzzi with a wooden slide lid over it that can be activated by remote control. From the upper terrace is a concrete stair that leads towards the wooden terrace. From there you can descend over the lower part of the hill. Over the steps and surrounded by tropical plants you follow an exciting trail that finally leads to an artwork. This arch looks like an ancient temple that you discover deep in the jungle. Next to the arch is a small building that looks like a bunker. In this building is a light installation made by artist James Terrell. Today we're gonna visit the coolest nightclub in Los Angeles. Placed below ground level and made entirely out of concrete, steel and glass, this building feels like a futuristic cave that looks over the skyline of the city. The whole project was the brainchild of its namesake, multi-millionaire James Goldstein, who already owned the neighboring Sheets Goldstein house. With its many sharp edges and triangles, the interior of the nightclub reflects the design of the Sheets Goldstein house. Namely, the nightclub was clearly intended as an extension of the house. The plan was that John Lauder would design the nightclub as well, but he passed away in the early stages of the drawing process. The project was then handed over to Duncan Nicholson, John Lauder's former assistant, but he died during the construction. Finally, the building was completed by Connor and Perry, two architects who had worked as assistants for Nicholson. So the final design has little to do with John Lawner. However, his influence is all over the place. And this is just what makes the building so interesting. It's an imitation of his style. The house has a unique interaction between inside and outside and with its many strange perspectives the design breeds the spirit of John Lautner. On the other hand there are more straight lines than the organic shapes that John Lautner would have used. And if John Lautner would have designed the club it probably would have felt more subtle. While the nightclub sometimes feels bulky and way over the top the most controversial part of the story is that another house with John Lawner was torn down to make place for the nightclub. The Concano residence was a beautiful home and it's a waste that it doesn't exist anymore. But keep in mind that it was John Lawner himself who gave permission to Goldstein for the demolishing of the house. I personally prefer that the Concano house would have stayed. But still, the nightclub is a spectacular building with many fascinating details and it's worth to make a video about it. So let's take a look inside. Only the tennis court is on the same ground level as the Sheets Goldstein house. The nightclub is underneath and is dug out in the hillside. Besides the dance floor there's a VIP lounge with a library and an office. The whole complex is only accessible by walking down the stair front of the tennis court. The walls are made of casted concrete that is unpolished. So the prints of the formwork are visible and they function as decorative patterns. The nightclub has a capacity of around 250 people and it has one very large cocktail bar to serve all these visitors. The furniture is custom made out of concrete and not removable.
The design is minimalistic and futuristic at the same time, and it makes the club look like the interior of a spaceship. Silver leather cushions are placed on the chairs. The tabletops are made of stainless steel. The steel of the dance floor reflects the colors of the landscape outside, blending the panorama with the interior. At the end of the nightclub is a cinema screen. The images projected on the screen can change the atmosphere in a nightclub. When we return towards the entrance, we see the DJ table, which is custom designed in style with the architecture. When we take a seat next to the DJ table, we can see the door of the VIP lounge in the background. This enclosed room is only accessible for the most important members of the club. It also functions as a library for Mr. Golds and his collection of art books. At the back side of the dance floor is a door towards a balcony. Here you can catch a breath of fresh air during the party. You can also see the corridor of the toilets, which is at the back side of the cinema screen. The corridor has mirrors on both sides, creating interesting reflections. The office has its main entrance at the other side of the building, so if you want to enter, you need to walk over the tennis court. Because the tennis court has only a small glass safety fence, you got the feeling of standing on the edge of the landscape. The green color of the tennis court looks like a grass field and it interacts with the surrounding garden with jungle-like plants. From a custom designed couch you can watch the tennis play. At the end of the tennis court is an outdoor stair. This stair leads to a balcony. There are the glass doors of the office. The windows of the office expand underneath the tennis court. This brings extra sunlight in the office. The office has many similarities with the master bedroom of the Sheets Goldstein house. Both rooms have a ceiling that climbs towards the windows, creating the feeling of opening towards the landscape. The office has also many similarities with an earlier office that John Lautner designed in 1989 for Goldstein. This design was only an interior, located in a rectangular workspace in an office building. The interior was small, but it was full of interesting details. It had a dividing wall between Goldstein and his secretary. To allow sunlight, this wall had a Clara story at the top. A photo of that wall was used for the cover of Lautner's biography by Frank Escher. The contemporary office has a similar wall, but then made of concrete. From a glass back door, you can enter the same balcony as the nightclub. From here is a stair that leads towards the terrace. This stair is constructed free of the building and rests only on the ground. It is connected with glass plates. The terrace is delimited over the entire length by a swimming pool that is slightly triangular. The colors of the sky are reflected in the water of the pool blending the pool with the landscape in the background and creating the illusion that the terrace has no edge. This pool is clearly inspired by the Arango Mabrisa house by John Lautner. The terrace has an outdoor kitchen which is cantilevered by the building above. Next to this kitchen is also a sitting area. The story of Club James keeps continuing. At this very moment, the construction project isn't finished yet. James Goldstein has plans to expand his building with a cinema at the right side and a guest house higher on the hill. 
He has also plans for a second guest house placed lower on a hill. More recently, James Goldstein has donated the house, together with the club, to the Los Angeles City Museum of Art. After he passes away, the nightclub will become a work of art, owned by a museum. My perspective on iconic designs is that, that it's simply a matter of something that can be done in the best possible way with no limitations. It's someone's imagination that creates a design that's unique and has never been done in that way before. As a young boy, I was always fascinated by contemporary architecture. I saw this house. It took me about two minutes of being here in the house to know this was the one that I had to have. This house really went through a major reconstruction, and it was never the intent to do restoration, so to speak. The intent was to take it to its ultimate potential. It wasn't until 1979 that I brought John Lautner here to look at the first specific project that I wanted to do to improve the house. I was working with him for a period of roughly 15 years, making the house and the adjoining property better and better. Till he died, John never offered to me his vision for the house. He wanted to know my vision for the house. The sofa that I'm sitting on right now was a collaboration between John Lochner and myself. I had John design furniture throughout the house, which he had never been given the opportunity to do before in any of his houses. I installed skylights throughout the house that opened automatically. I installed windows in the bedroom that opened automatically at the press of a button. I was very much a part of designing the nightclub that I've called Club James. Well, the vision was to uh, use concrete primarily and glass in the construction of the club to uh, carry forward the John Lautner approach to architecture. I've lived here for more than 40 years now. There's never a day that goes by that I'm not thinking about what I can do to make it even better than it is. It's the process of continually working on projects that keeps me excited. I made up my mind years ago that I wanted the house in the hands of some institution that would leave the house in the same condition and at the same time open it up to the public who could hopefully be inspired to help make Los Angeles as architecturally conscious as possible. I ultimately ended up with LACMA and I was very impressed with their ideas for the future. It's been a really important part of my life. I feel as though it's been my life's work and that my gift to the city was an effort to increase architectural awareness for the people in the city.